All right, so today I want to talk about something that's been around in poker for a long time, and that's the taxonomies or the way we articulate a, a player's preflop action. So for, for the, the longest time, we have these words like tag and lag, right? Tag first, to tight aggressive. A player who doesn't play that many hands, but when he plays it or she plays it, they play it aggressively and loose aggressive. And, you know, that's still used to this day. And then we've seen some evolution in how people discuss tag or lags, right? So sometimes online coaching videos, people refer, you know, say like a bad lag. And a bad lag is somebody who's, you know, loose and aggressive, but they're just kind of bad and spewy and, you know, not really, there's no real actual information driven process behind their loose aggressive style. They're just kind of one of these players that just play a wide range and that's it. Um, and then we have like, yeah, and that's it, like bad lag or, I mean, there's really nothing more. And you got to stop using the tag and lag term. I really don't think it's effective anymore in today's games. I don't think it's good enough to say this player is a tag and this player is a lag. And there's a bunch of reasons on why I don't think this tag lag taxonomy is is it's a good foundation, but it needs to be improved on, right? So the first is from a coaching perspective, uh, tag and lag is used to justify a lot of the bullshit and mistakes that you do when you play. So like I'll be I'll be coaching someone and I'll be like, oh, so you know why did you take that line? And they'll be like, oh, those players really tight, you know, really 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 tag style player, super tight, and they'll say that, and it's kind of like. Eh, think he was really that much of a tag he seemed to be a little bit more of x y and z and you use it to you use it to basically justify things that you shouldn't be doing so it's like why'd you call oh really lag player players really really laggy or really loose aggressive or really and it's just not necessarily true that those terms are not actually grounded in fact like when you play online like my hud see my t-shirt says you can't hide behind a screen it's a Beyond Tells reference saying like, you know, online players, you can't hide behind a screen. We can read your behavior, so on and so forth. But like when you're playing online, like the terms lag and tag get operationally defined as a result of metrics, right? As a result of this HUD. So you see somebody is like uh, uh, VPIP is four, which is voluntary put in pot, and PFR is like four. That means they're super, super tight. They're only, you know, raising a very small percentage of hands. And you come up with an operational definition of what it is to be tight aggressive or what it means to be loose aggressive. And one of the reasons I don't like this uh, tag or lag taxonomy sometimes is because it it limits your ability to exploit your opponents. A lot of players will, you know, label their opponents as loose or tight and that's it. They don't really extend their thinking to multiple streets. And there's some players that are super loose pre and then all of a sudden on the turn of river they completely shut down and they're only going to call you with the absolute nuts. And the time to extract the most val amount of value from them or I'm sorry, the the time to exploit them is in on later streets as opposed to earlier on. And I think sometimes Sometimes players get lost in this tag lag kind of concept. Also, um, I think that <laughs> the term tag and lag is horrible for coaching and talking about poker because of the concept that I don't really know what your version of tight aggressive is versus my you know version of loose aggressive. So you could say, Blake, this is you know really tight, really 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 tight player. Your really really tight could be like I don't know, like two percent of player opens or, or player raises with two percent of his range, or a very small limited hand. Where my concept of tight can be five or six percent. Like you don't really know exactly what that is. Um, and I just think there's a lot of errors in decision making, especially when people like talk or refer to hands. They'll say like this is a really loose player and. Uh, in those definitions of loose or tight, we lose what loose or tight actually means. Therefore, we give advice that's not actually correct. I, I, I hope that makes sense. And I see it come up a lot with me. Like a player will be like, all right, you know, he's pretty loose. And I'll be like, well, what does loose actually mean? So one of the things you want to do instead of um, – you want to define what it is to be a loose aggressive player or a tight aggressive player. And it's really not the most helpful when you're sitting down at a table and you're like, this player's loose. It's much more helpful if you're like, this player played one out of 20 hands or about one out of every 30 hands or plays every other hand. I mean, that's more, it, it, it's more defined in a way that's actually usable. Right, like I see so many players label people a certain uh, a certain type of player, and then make a mistake playing against that range of a type of player because they overestimate or underestimate what it means to be tight or loose. I'm kind of saying the same thing over and over again, but it's really bothering me. And I think it can you can extend way beyond that. Like, what about taxonomy systems or classification systems for players play post flop? Like, what if you had something like he's a um, uh, 
a loose flop player or something. I don't know. I gotta come up with a better term. But basically, like the kind of player who will not give up on any flop. Doesn't matter how much you bet into him, he'll he's willing to see the turn or willing to see maybe even the river. So the flop they don't even take into consideration. And in today's games, like it just it's not good in, to be. I mean, I don't want to say that. I mean, like if you still most players still aren't the best at their pre-flop decisions, which lead to mistakes later on. But I think you need to develop your game way beyond. Uh, pre-flop and in, and that taxonomy or that system doesn't work. I'll improve it. I'll, I'll try to uh, come up with a different way of thinking about uh, pre-flop ranges as opposed to tag or lag. I mean, like when you play online or when you used to have conversations online, it was so much different, right? You'd be like, oh, this player like a, a, a 10-5 or 10-9, which would be referring to actual metrics, which are based on a, on a range so you can say, okay, I know exactly what that looks like. But we're not taking that level of data when we're playing on uh, live. So we're not saying like, he's a 5-5. He's a five, five. Nobody's counting how many times a player plays per hour. I mean, you can get a guesstimate of it, but it's really difficult to ascertain exactly what the number is. But I think we need to do a better job of doing that. I just, I have to come up with a, a more effective way um, how or how to do that. So be careful when you use these tag and lag terms. Um, you want to operationally define or further expand on what it means to be tight aggressive or loose aggressive, right? Uh, because information is lost when we use these broad spectrum things. It's like it's like calling somebody like you know uh, that person is a really good athlete. Like, well, what sport? Why are they good? There's so much more that we can use to make more informed decisions at the poker table. And I'll uh, comment below if you have any ideas. And don't don't use a HUD. Like I know like. PFR, three bet, four bet, like get, you can't, we, we're trying to make it more, it's really difficult to remember that someone's four bet range is, or, or a, well, let's say a player five bet shove is like point, um, what is it, like point, uh, point nine percent of the time, which would be like with aces or kings or something like, yeah, aces or kings. You, you're, you're not going to remember that. You have to make it something that's workable and practical at the table. All right, uh, let me know if you have any comments or any ideas about how we can improve this. I'm going to think about this as well. It bothers me, but I haven't really come up with a solution on how to improve that, which bothers me even more. I've just been telling players to, for the most part, what they should do is try to operationally define it with some sort of number. Um, I'm using the word operationally define a lot because I love that definition. Operationally, an operational definition comes from when you you do research in uh, in the social sciences and I mean in any science. But like when you're doing a study, you need to operationally define your terms. So you need to when you make a statement, you have to lay out what that statement means. So like if I say someone's depressed, I have to define what depressed means. So it could be like a depression as operationally defined by the you know the Beck's depression inventory or something like that. And the whole point is when I say depressed, there's a uniform definition of what depression means so that everyone's on the same page. Because if you just said depression in a study, it, depression to you could mean something completely different from depression for someone else. And that's why I'm such a you know an advocate for really clean operational definitions that everybody understands. And it's the same thing in poker. But I don't know. I think I think the poker community has lost it. It's just so easy to say tag and lag. And outside the online, the online guys and girls, you you're great. We all know you're really great at identifying what it is. But not for nothing, you've got this thing in front of you that aggregates all the data and gives you exactly what it is. So it's not like it's not like you know the most difficult. Where live players, you know, you need to keep the stuff in your head, which is a little bit more complicated, in my opinion. I don't think it's that hard to read a HUD once you understand the mechanics of what a HUD is. Anyways, um, I love rambling on these things. I could just go. I could, I could literally just talk for like an hour every day about random stuff that has to do with poker. Um, but that's enough for today. Comment below. I'm going to go uh, work on more videos.